Uh, the very latest on this ferocious blue cut fire has now swallowed up homes, trees, and brush over a 49 square mile area off Interstate 15. Rick Dickert is in Sky Fox, where he's been since the very start of this disaster. So, Rick, we're going to begin our coverage with you for the very latest. Your, your, your line of sight right now. Look at this line of sight, too. It's a great one from up here in Sky Fox HD from 8,500 feet. Lisa, Julie, you could see it, 32,000 acres, nearly 32,000 acres consumed. That was the last report we had. And there's still two active areas. But first, I want to show you Interstate 15 there, running from the bottom of your screen to the top. Open in both directions now. Yes, traffic is moving from the top of the pass, from Hesperian Apple Valley southbound into the IE. They still have one lane taken away up towards the top of the pass. The reason why they kept that southbound side closed longer than the northbound side was because it was closer to the fire and that there was some damage to the freeway because of the fire, some guardrail damage that they had to work on. So CHP has opened it up. You can make your way north and southbound on Interstate 15, this major thoroughfare here, not only for Southern California, a trucker out there. You can see all the big rigs on the move again, but also for the rest of the country. Rail service has returned to the Cajon Pass as well. Now back to the two hot spots. One, the western flank near right. We'll start you off at the top of the uh, picture here, and you can see all that charred real estate. That's the area that's burning closest to Wrightwood, although still well away from Wrightwood, east of Wrightwood. That's the area they're going to hit. Steep, rugged terrain, only really accessible by those helicopters. You see that Sikorsky there in the foreground. That Sikorsky 64, 2,600 50 gallons of water it drops there on that chaparral and timber that's burning up there. Right now, Wrightwood is okay. We heard that earlier from AirTac. That continues, and there's a drop. Yeah, good drop there by that Sikorsky, the Hella tanker there. Now we'll go down to the southeastern flank. This is the flank that's burning closest to Lytle Creek. You can see the painted hillside, that FOS check that's been dropped. And down below here, they're battling uh, the fire in this canyon. But it's well away from Lido Creek. They're going to try to uh, keep it in that canyon there and make sure that it does not spread any farther. Really good news. We'll widen out. Now, Julian, Lisa, from yesterday, if I want to rate what I see up here on a scale of zero being the worst case scenario to attend, meaning essentially the fire's out. Yesterday, we were probably at about a two or a three. Looking at this picture, and I'm sure you guys will agree because you saw it with me. I'm going to give it more of like a five to a six. They got to get those two hot spots. They've made tremendous progress. I said earlier this morning, I think today is the day we'll, where they will turn the tide and start to get a better handle on this fire, fire. Up that containment, it's just at 4%, starving the fire, the fuel, heat, and oxygen that it needs to sustain itself and grow on the ground and in the air with a personnel of 1,600 now. So. I'm looking at a much better picture than what I've seen the last couple of days. Hopefully that continues. The heat of the day is uh, just an hour or two away. The winds, for the most part, are light down below here. They're stronger up top of the ridge. We'll keep an eye on it from up here in Sky Fox HD, as always. Back to you in the studio. Okay, Rick, thank you. And again, though, that red flag warning stays in effect, of what, until 9 o'clock, you said, tonight? It's 9 o'clock. They may have to extend it to end of Friday, but right now they are planning on uh, letting it to go this evening, meaning that the heightened fire conditions, the rapid fire growth conditions continue. Okay. Fingers crossed. And as always, thank you for your amazing pictures and your insight. Yeah. Well, Rick's co covered countless fires. Mm -hmm. So to hear him say that it's probably going to turn the tide, it's very good news for us. And down here on the ground, we've got our uh, Mario Ramirez. He's in the neighborhood where firefighters are protecting homes up in the hills. He joins us live in Wrightwood. Hi, Mario. Exactly, Julie. That fire ripping through this area this morning, and you can see here in the distance the charred mountainside, but on the east side of that hill, the smoke starting to rise. That's the area that Rick Dickert was just talking about, and we've got about half a dozen fire crews standing by because this is very close to this residential area where we are hearing a lot of the residents inside are refusing to leave, and that's a concern uh, for officials out here under a mandatory evacuation. Okay, we want to show you some video in the same area early this morning. This this should give you an idea of how quickly things change. We arrived here between 3 and 4 o'clock this morning to massive flames consuming trees and torching the mountainside near Highway 2, otherwise known as the Angeles Crest Highway, just south of uh, 138. Now, let's move to some aerial shots from Sky Fox earlier this morning as well, and you get a sense of the air quality and how far-reaching this wildfire really is. The San Bernardino County Fire Department's main priority has been structure protection. Firefighters continue 
continuing to put containment lines in place. Now, we've just been told only about 50% of residents in Wrightwood have evacuated. Listen. This area has had a lot of fires, a lot of fire history in the past. Um, people sometimes when they get lucky, they feel like, hey, it hasn't happened to me, so they stay. Um, you know, we, we try to tell them to leave. When they say mandatory evacuations, we can't physically go in and tell them to leave their, their actual home. It's only a, a recommendation we can only strongly give them and have them leave. So I try to talk to everybody I can and just let them know that, you know, now's the time. Uh, when we have to go, we're going to be worried about our life safety too. So um, it's really important, and we're trying to push that on this fire. Again, that mandatory evacuation in place for the Wrightwood community. Now, here are some of the latest numbers again. Nearly 32,000 acres have been burned. The fire still at only 4% containment. The good news is the winds are expected to be much calmer than what they were yesterday, and uh, firefighters can at least deal with these conditions as opposed to the last few days as they continue to battle this wildfire. For now, reporting live in Wrightwood, I'm Mario Ramirez. We'll send it back to you in the studio.